I've been using the HTC U11 Plus for a while now and it's really impressed me. It follows from the earlier U11 minus the extremely flashy back, but it feels like a typical HTC phone, which is not a bad thing at all. It's built well with an aluminium frame but over time the glossy back finish can pick up micro scratches if used without a case and the profile of the phone overall is slightly on the chunky side. That being said, the phone's 18x9 aspect ratio makes it really comfortable to use. Of course, you'll find the 6-inch Quad HD resolution display up front, and I quite liked it. It's a super LCD panel which makes for some natural looking color out of the box. You'll find a slight blue shift to it when looking at it from extreme angles, but it really isn't much. And outdoors, the screen is very much usable under direct sunlight. In fact, using the phone even underwater is possible because of its IP68 water and dust resistance without sacrificing design language in any way. Over the days I've had the phone, watching content on it was very enjoyable. I liked how boom sound complemented the near bezel-less display and the sound produced was very rich. The compromise though is that you won't get the 3.5mm headphone jack in spite of the phone being 8.5mm thick as I mentioned previously. Instead you'll have to rely on USB-C to listen to music via the USonic headphones provided out of the box. They come with inbuilt noise cancellation and fit really well in my ears at least. Now let me talk a bit about my experience. One thing that stood out to me was how smooth and responsive the screen was to the touch. The U11 Plus keeps it very simple with its Sense UI and bloatware free UI and runs on a rather clean looking Android 8.0 Oreo. It has been keeping up with security updates over the past month and combining this with top class processing power, the phone is a real contender. Hints of slowing down were very minimal and graphic hungry games worked with absolutely no problem. If anything, I felt that RAM management was a bit of a mismatch. There's 6GB of RAM on board but I feel like the phone doesn't take advantage of this at times and you would have seen it too if you've watched our speed test from earlier this month. No doubt a software fix will be the solution to this and we're hoping HTC does it very very soon. Something I found a bit annoying though was the phone losing out to Wi-Fi connection at times or when I was taking calls only for the microphone to be covered with my pinky finger because of the microphone's placement. Reception though on calls has been no issue at all. Also a part of the phone's design is the fingerprint scanner which I had a very very pleasant experience with. It's placed well, it's quick, it's responsive and I barely have to wait for the phone to unlock. I like that HTC has also included a facial unlock feature to unlock your phone but to be honest, it's quite a hit or a miss and I much prefer the fingerprint scanner. Last but not least is EdgeSense, which is HTC's way of standing out from the crowd. For me, squeezing the phone to achieve a certain task isn't really a big part of my daily routine, apart from when I have to snooze alarms, for which case it was very helpful. I often also used it to launch the camera, but what I found myself doing was accidentally launching it in my pocket, which led to battery drain. But before I address battery, I want to talk about the phone's camera. I'll be honest, it's the biggest factor holding the phone back, in my opinion. The 12 megapixel camera is very bare bones and doesn't offer much apart from the regular picture taking experience, which isn't enough in 2018. Some of the pictures it produces are good and the phone is good at handling direct light. But in darker cases, the shutter speed tends to take a toll and pictures aren't of the same caliber as other flagships. Dynamic range is also missed in photos but editing images does make them look a lot better. The selfie camera on the other hand sways slightly to darker tones and tends to blur out selfies in motion but the 8 megapixel detail is nice to have. For 4K video, it blows a lot of highlights out and stabilization isn't very good with jerky movements when walking. So that brings us to battery. The U11 Plus rocks a 3930 mAh cell which is very impressive and battery life has been excellent for me. Screen on times have been over 6 hours on a consistent basis and I don't have to worry about charging my phone through the day at all. And even if I do, quick charging 3 is very fast and tends to charge the phone from 0 to 100% in about an hour and 45 minutes. 
for its current local pricing, the HTC U11 Plus is a good offering, but if priced maybe a few hundred dirhams less, it could very well provide the best value among flagships out there. After the U11, the U11 Plus is a strong refresh and addresses many of the weaknesses that the predecessor had. So if you're looking for strong multimedia performance, a powerful device, and a good design, look no further. Thanks for watching our review of the HTC U11 Plus and leave your thoughts in the comments down below. If you've missed our recent videos, do check them out and subscribe for more in the future. I'll see you in the next video. Adios.